In this video we're going to look at using integrals with polar equations and this one is a little bit tricky. You have to really visualize what's happening. So we want to find the area inside r equals 3 sine theta and r equals 2 minus sine theta. So the area inside both of these curves. And we have the purple one here and the red one here. So inside both of these curves is going to be this area right here. This is the area that we want to find. All right, so to really think about how we're going to set up this integral, um, we need to visualize what's happening in this area. So I've kind of zoomed in here to this picture. Now remember, when you're finding areas using polar equations, using integrals, you've got your formula, your equation, you know, the integral from alpha to beta of 1 half f of theta squared d theta, which you could also write as a little bit cleaner, 1 half r d theta, but you have to remember that this r has to be written as a function of theta. All right, and, and we got this formula, or sorry, r squared, forget my squared there. We got this formula by cutting this into sectors, right? You remember that? So hopefully you have had some experience with deriving the formula because you need to understand that in order to think about how to set up your integral for your area. So this is the entire area that we want to find. So if we think about starting our sectors, we might start here and we might start cutting our sectors like this. Okay, so that's going to that's going to go from 0 and it's going to intersect a red curve. Then it's going to come up here and it's going to intersect the red curve. Then it's going to come up here and at some point it's going to touch here. So if I'm finding this area down here, I'm going to have to use my sectors based off this red curve. Now, let's use a different color. Let's say, now I keep doing my sectors. Now I'm going to go like this. Now I'm doing to the purple curve, like this. Sorry, I'm getting these lines as straight as I can here. So we really need to set up two different integrals. We need to think about splitting this area from 0 to this intersection point and find this area down here, I need to make that a little bit, see if I can make that a little smaller so I can shade better. This area, and then we need to find this yellow area up here. Now certainly we could see that this is symmetric and we could probably prove it, but I don't think we need to prove it here. So this orange area is going to be the same in the second quadrant as it is in the first quadrant. So what I could really do is just find the area in the first quadrant and then multiply it by 2. That's going to be the easiest way to do this. All right, so to do our orange, we have to find these points of intersection. And if you watch the first video, we already did this, but I'll do it again here so you can fast forward a little bit. It's not too long. We need to find these points of intersection. Where do these graphs touch each other? So we just set up a little equation and we solve it. Now we get sine theta equals a half. And the angles where sine equals a half are 30 degrees or pi over 6. And then over here is 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6. So this point right here, this angle is pi over 6. So our first integral is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 6. And we're just finding the area under, I use that term loosely, the area bounded by this red curve here, which is 3 sine theta. So we're going to do 1 half 3 sine theta squared d theta. All right, and that's going to give us the orange area. This whole thing is going to give us the orange area. And then we're going to add on the yellow area. So starting here, starting at pi over 6 and going to whatever this angle is, we're going to have to figure that out. All right, so this point right here, we, we can see that the radius is 1. So we want to figure out what angle this is. It's, you, you might think it's 90, and it probably is 90. But remember, it could also be 3 pi over 2 up negative 1. You know, So you do kind of have to be careful and make sure, but it probably is. So with the purple angle here, we could just verify with the purple um, curve. 
that if I let r equal 1, and I solve for theta, figure out what angle that is, because that's going to give me the upper bound of my um, integral. So I get negative 1 equals negative sine theta, sine theta equals 1, and the sine is 1 at pi over 2. All right, so that's this is pi over 2. So that's going to be this angle here all the way from here to here is pi over 2. So my next integral for the yellow part is going to be the integral from pi over 6. Let me write that a little neater. That got a little sloppy. From pi over 6 to pi over 2. Pi over 6 to pi over 2. And I'm not subtracting curves, right? This sector is going from 0 to this purple curve. It's not like you're subtracting one thing from another, which you certainly could do in a picture like this. And in my last video, we did this area up here. And then I had to subtract the red from the purple. But when I'm doing this and I'm thinking about these sectors, I'm not subtracting one curve from another curve. It's, based, it's going from 0, 0. So these sectors are going to the red curve or to the purple curve. They're not being subtracted. All right, so here I have 1 half then to the purple curve is 2 sine 2 minus sine theta squared d theta and that's giving me the yellow area half the yellow area all right just this part of it and then i'm going to multiply the whole thing by 2 this whole bad boy because i'm just doing what's in the first quadrant and i need all of it All right, so just for clarity, kind of redraw this picture without all the sectors in it. The integral from 0 to pi over 6 of 1 half times 3 sine theta squared, because this red curve is 3 sine theta, that's going to give you just this orange part right here. We figured out this point was pi over 6. The angle was pi over 6. We had to figure that out. Pi over and then the yellow part here is going to be making sectors to the purple curve. And that goes from pi over 6 to pi over 2 and 1 half. And then this function squared d theta. Now that only gives us this part. So we need the other part over here to find the total area between the curves. And so we're going to multiply this whole thing by 2 once we figure it out. Or we could distribute that 2 into these, which will cancel the halves, which will be nice. Actually, that's probably what I would do. And we can distribute the 2 to each of these, move it inside the integral. So we'll have the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of 9 sine squared theta d theta plus the integral pi over 6 to pi over 2. We'll have to multiply that out so we'd have 4 minus 4 sine theta plus sine squared theta d theta. Okay, so I, I multiplied this 2 in and canceled that half and this half as well. So I was just left with that. Now the rest of this video is going to be going through and figuring out this integral. If you're really confident about figuring out integrals, you could skip it. Now this is the main part the main focus of this video is how do I set up these polar equations when I'm finding areas between curves? Sometimes I subtract them, sometimes I don't. You know, you're, sometimes I divide them into two integrals, sometimes I don't. You really have to look at the area that you want and think about these sectors and think about what curve you're using to create those sectors. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this just for people that might want to see it. All right, here we go. So. Uh, I pulled in this trig identity that we're going to need to deal with these sine squareds. When you're doing integration, you need to replace these sine squareds with this trig identity. Okay, so we're going to have integral from 0 to pi over 6, 1 half, I'll pull this 9 out here, 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta, d theta, and you can't combine any of these terms from this integral with that integral because the bounds are different. So you do have to do them separate. So we have 4 minus 4 
sine theta plus replace the sine squared with one half minus one half cosine two theta d theta. All right, should we try some integration? Let's do it. So we have nine times uh, one half theta minus. Now we got to do our little u sub here, right? So this is like u equals two theta. So du equals two d theta, and then you have to balance that with a half out here. So we have the half that's already there, but then we have to multiply it by another half for our little u sub. And then the integral of cosine is sine. All right, and this guy is going to get evaluated from 0 to pi over 6. So the next one, um, we could combine this 4 and this half. That's 4 and a half or 9 halves. And so that's going to give us 9 halves theta when we do the integral. And then this guy is going to be, let's see, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, so that's going to be f positive. And then same thing with our u sub over here, so we're going to have the half that's there multiplied by another half, sine 2 theta. And we're going to evaluate that from pi over 6 to pi over 2. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this stuff in. So if I plug uh, pi over 6 in here, I'm going to get pi over 12 times 9. So that's 9 pi over 12, which is 3 pi over 4. Okay, um, let's see. We have 1 fourth, and then I'm going to take the sine of pi over 3. I'll just leave that like that, and we'll do those the next time around. Now when I plug in 0, I plug in 0, that's going to be 0. Let's see, I plug in 0 there, I'm going to get the sine of 0, which is 0. So that's all going to be gone. That's good. All right, let's go to this guy. So I'm going to plug in pi over 2. So that's going to give me 9 pi over 4. 9 pi over 4 plus, uh, we can do cosine of pi over 2. That's 0. All right, so we'll plug pi over 2 into here. And we get, well, let's put the zero there for our placeholder so we remember that we did it. Pi over two, and for here, we're going to get sine of pi, which is zero. Okay, that's good. So pi over two, all that business there, minus, now we'll plug in pi over six. So I'm going to have nine pi over 12, which reduces to three pi over four, plus four times the cosine of pi over six. Um, minus one fourth. Let's see, and then we're going to have the sine of pi over three. So I left a couple little trig things to do. So we've got three pi over four minus, let's see, the sine of pi over three, that's 60 degrees. So that sine is going to be root three over two. So one fourth times root three over two. It's going to be root 3 over 8 plus 9 pi over 4. We got some zeros, which is nice. And then we're going to distribute this negative. Let's see, cosine pi over 6. Pi over 6 is um, 30 degrees, so that's root 3 over 2. So 4 times root 3 over 2, those, are, those will cancel and we'll get 2 root 3. So plus 2 root 3. Sine pi over 3, 60 degrees, so that's root 3 over 2, so we're going to get root 3 over 8 plus root 3 over 8. So it's plus because I'm distributing this negative. Did I distribute my negative there? Nope, I didn't. You guys probably caught that. Let's change that. Let's see, that should be negative right there. Let's check our distributing negative, negative, positive. All right. All right. So since I messed up this distributing or missed that, let's double check my distributing up here. I hate to get this far. Let's see. Did I distribute that 9 there? Did I forget that 9 there? 9? I think I did. All right. 
So this should be a 9. 9 over 4. Okay, 9 over 4. All right, we're almost there. Looks like we've got some pi terms and some root 3 terms. And then we're good to go. So let's do our pi terms here. Put these together. Oh, those are going to drop out. Okay, that's good. So I just have 9 pi over 4 for my pi terms. 9 pi over 4. And then I have some root 3 terms. So this is negative 9 eighths plus 1 eighth. So that's going to be negative 8 eighths. which is negative uh, 1 minus 2 root 3. So negative 1 root 3 minus 2 root 3 would be negative 3 root 3. Whew, we did it. All right, so there's our exact answer. Now, it might be nice to plug that into your calculator and just get a decimal for that and then go back and look at the picture and see if it makes sense. I always like to do that. So let's see, if I punch this in, I punched it in, I got about 1.87. So that's supposed to be the area between these curves. Let's go take a look at this picture. Let's see, we got about 1.87. So does that make sense for this picture? Well, you know, this is one square unit right here, right? So we can see, like in the second quadrant, it's a little bit less than one square unit because we're not doing this area and this area. Right, we're just doing we're doing this. So it should be pretty close to one square unit. There is some of it that's outside. You know, this little piece right here is also outside this square unit. But if we're guesstimating here that that's a square unit, this area is pretty close to a square unit. So something close to two square units seems very, very reasonable. All right. Well, I hope that helped. And, um, you know, these can be tricky. Again, really super important that you think about the sectors when you're setting up your integrals and uh, then just proceed from there and watch your distributing and um, hopefully this video helped.